We're going to be expressive today, all right? Man, it's good to be here with you, back with you today. I can't remember when I was in Mexico, but it wasn't long ago. We have, uh, basically when I got back, picked up Salo, Pastor Salo, two days later, and we've been all over the place. We've been in East Tennessee um, for a day and a half, it seemed like maybe 10 days. It was very difficult travel, wasn't it? But we're back. Pastor Salo was uh, speaking in our church plant in West Tennessee last night, and uh, Jace uh, took him to uh, Henry, and they got back in time to actually be with us last night before we finished. God's just been so good. Has God been good to you? That's all I want to know today. I love the spirit of worship that I see here today. It's been just great to be able to just let loose a little bit and just worship God. I'm going to tell you something, and the more I have been in this uh, ministry and role that I'm in, the more I realize that if Jesus doesn't come back, the world's just, there's just no hope. But for us believers, he's coming back. I mean, there's so much in the Bible about him coming back. So much in the Bible about things like, what is your life? It's a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it's gone. That's not designed to make you think, oh, man, I better live, you know, to the full because I'm going to die soon. No, that actually was written to persecuted Christians that were thinking, how much longer am I going to have to suffer? James says, it's not going to be forever. Your suffering is not going to be forever. One of these days, you're going to be in the presence of your Lord and Savior. And one day, like the song says, behold, he comes. Man, what a day that's going to be. Amen? Now, if you can't get excited about that, there's, there's not much that anyone can do for you, you know? Because that is the hope of the Christian. And I think that we need to get our spirits stirred today. Don't you think so? How many of you are saved today? You know that you're saved. What does that mean to be saved? It, it means a lot of things, but I think probably the biggest thing it means is for eternity, we will be with God. For eternity, we will not suffer. Somebody says, I don't know what it looks like for those who are not with God. Well, you can read it in the Bible, but it doesn't look very impressive. When you look in the book of Luke chapter 16, you read stories about uh, people dying without Jesus, a rich man, and he goes into a place, he says, I'm tormented to this flame. And that doesn't sound very uh, encouraging. That's, that didn't come out of the uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People book, you know? But that's what's going on. You see, sometimes we forget that without Jesus, people are lost. And Jesus has us here to be instruments of his redemption because Jesus loves people. I'm glad that Jesus loves people because that means he loves me, amen? And Jesus died for me, and Jesus gave me his salvation, and Jesus gave me his spirit, and Jesus gave me his church, and Jesus gave me his hope, and Jesus gave me his plan, and Jesus gave me his future. You know what? Life is good, ladies and gentlemen, because God is good. How many of you can say amen to that? You know, I don't know if your suffering will stop today. I don't know how long that season is going to be in your life, but I can tell you this. There is a God who is alive, and he loves you, and he has you here for a purpose, and that's what this weekend's all about. I want to put a scripture on the board. This is some things that I was thinking about yesterday morning, and I want to put the book of Acts up here, Acts chapter 1, and talk to you just a few moments before Salo does. I'm not going to take a lot of his time, but I wanted to show you this. Because this is something that the New Testament talks about, and we call it the Great Commission. There's three passages in the Bible, in Matthew, and in Mark, and in Acts, where Jesus leaves his church instructions about what to do. Now say to do. Say it again. Sometimes in the church today, we think that the work Jesus did, he got it done, and now all we have to do is kind of sit here and relax and enjoy it. But when you look at the New Testament, it's very clear that when God saves us, he gives us something to do. Look what he says. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set in his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What a story. Can we say it like this? They were having a church meeting. You know they were having a church meeting because they were together. They were eating, praise God. Amen. If they had a coffee bar in those days, they probably had coffee too. Amen. They're getting together and they're talking and Jesus gives them instructions. How many of you believe Jesus is the head of the church? So how many of you believe that you being saved are a part of the church? You see, the Bible says about this baptism of the Spirit. Let me make sure that you understand what that means. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not something that you hope a Christian person will get someday. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is God's mark upon your life that you are saved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, by, by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. I've been baptized into one body. That's the body of Jesus Christ. That's who you are. And if you've been saved, you've been given God's Holy Spirit, and you are a part of us. Praise God. That makes sense? We are together in the body of Christ. But in this moment, the Spirit of God had not done that work yet. So Jesus said, don't do anything until you get power. And then when you get power, this is what's going to happen. Now, modern day church might say, we get power. That makes us feel good. So we sit back and enjoy the ride. But now Jesus says, when you get power, there's something for you to do. Say to do. He said, this is what I'm going to want you to do. You're going to be my witnesses. Say witnesses. Uh, you're going to be my witnesses, but where, Jesus? Where do you want us to be the witnesses? In Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let me ask you something. Does it sound like Jesus wants us to be witnesses? Now, what is a witness, by the way? A witness is someone that tells what they know. A witness is someone that tells what they saw. A witness is someone that has the ability to communicate something good. You see, the good news about the Bible is that the Bible is good news. The gospel is good news. The gospel is the fact that Jesus loves us. He didn't just condemn us. He didn't just leave us our way. He came and died for us. He paid the penalty for our sins. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I do not ever have to feel condemnation about our sins again because Jesus has taken them away from us. And when you experience the forgiveness of God's grace and you have been given the power of the Holy Spirit, I just personally believe you're going to tell somebody about it. And so Jesus said, you're going to be my witness and you're going to tell people about me. I know a lot of people who say, oh, I'm a Christian, but they never talk about Jesus. I'm like, I just don't get that. And in fact, if I could say that to you today, maybe that's why your life is not working because you really don't know who Jesus is. But don't feel guilty today. Just feel convicted and feel moved and feel the fact that God loves you and he invites you to his family today. This is a family reunion today. We are together in the name of Jesus and people who love Jesus are here from our community. And God sent us someone from 2,000 miles away to share the good news this morning. This is a good day. And Jesus said, you're going to share in Jerusalem and Judea and, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You know what that means? That means every Christian has the commission to share Christ everywhere. Can I say to you, Live Church, that's exactly who we are. We share Christ right here. We share Christ across the river. And we share Christ across the border. Because that's what Christ told us to do. A godly church, a church that pleases the Lord is a church that is on mission. He said, this is what you are to do. Some people say, well, I don't have the ability to do that. That's exactly right. But God's Holy Spirit does have the ability. And if you'll pay attention to what Jesus is telling you, he will open doors for you to share the good news. Let me give you one more scripture, and I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Salo. This is in Acts chapter 9, I believe it is. You guys remember the guy named Saul? Just a coincidence that that's his name. Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples, and he went to the high priest 
and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Let me give you the real, keep the scripture up there, thank you. What's going on here, there's a guy who was persecuting Christians. He was persecuting Christians. He wanted to persecute more Christians. He hated Christians. And he was asking for permission to go persecute some more Christians. And here he is. He's nearing Damascus on his journey. Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says, who are you, Lord? And Saul asked, I am... That's what Saul asked. He says, I am Jesus, who are you persecuting? He supplied, or he replied. Now notice this. Jesus says something to him. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Can I ask you something? Is that the kind of gospel that is commonly being preached today? That when the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you as the light of the Lord flashes around you and you start to realize that you're lost and that you do not know Jesus and you come to the Lord and you say, who are you? I don't know you. And he saves you. But then he says, this is what I want you to do. <clears throat> Go into the city and I'll tell you what to do. We live in a day right now when the church has become a place of consumption. But we just come in and we want a church to make us feel good. I want a church that will do what I want them to do. I want a church that will make me feel a certain way. I want a church that does the things that, I, that makes me happy. And everything in that is theologically wrong. I want to go to a church that's like this. I wish that I could go to church like these people I see on television or on the internet and all of the big shots that are all over the place. I want to be there. I want to be where these people are. Here's the problem with your statement. Instead of saying I want to go to that church, Jesus says that our actual statement should be I want to be the church. Mm -hmm. You think that if you go somewhere and they have a better pastor that your life is going to be different? Not. You think that if you go someplace where they do something better or more excellent? Not. You see, in the, in the church today, we have made it something whereby we are almost in competition. You see, I was in business a long time. I know how that is. I know how it is to try to think about the product that you're going to put out and you make sure you have the help that can do it and you want to do it with excellence and you need to market it. And I'm not saying all those things are necessarily wrong. And I believe that everything we should do, we should do it to the Lord and we should do with excellence. But ladies and gentlemen, Life Church is not a product to be consumed. It's a family to be enjoyed. In Life Church, you can be surrounded by other people, other strugglers just like you who love Jesus. You can be around people who are serving the Lord. You can be around people who are praying. You can be around people who can help you with your life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time that we stop the consumer mentality. And hear what God said to Saul. I will tell you what you must do. Here's the point. The point of what I want to tell you today is that there's so much that God wants to do here with us right here in our community and around the world. But it will not be done until you and I get involved. There's a part to be played by everybody in this room. I don't care who you are. There's something for you to do in the name of Jesus. And if you're not getting it done, today is the day to decide, Lord, I'll come to you. You tell me what to do. I said this last night. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you do. But for the month of November, here at Life Church, what we discovered was we had two, maybe three volunteers for the nursery for the entire month. Now, how many of you believe it's important to have nursery workers? How many of you believe that it's important to have people that love those kids back there and have patience? Somebody say amen. amen. You see, I'll just be honest with you. I think the heroes of Life Church are right back there right now. And honestly, if we were going to give blessing and give credit where credit's due before we go home, we're going to go by there and stick our head in and, and give them a thumbs up. You know what I mean? Because... That might not be the most exciting thing to do, but you know what? If you have the gift of loving children, no one has to make you do it. There's a lady sitting here right over here. She's been uh, down physically for a little while, but I want you to know for years and years and years and years and years, Miss Donna Burkhead has kept that nursery working because she loves children and she loves Jesus.
And you know what happens when people like that are back there? We get a chance to come in here and focus. You think it's important? But what are we going to do? The point is, there are some of you right here today, you can give us one weekend every month or every two months. And you might find out, like Miss Donna, that you love it. No one had to make you do that, did they, Donna? You just loved it. Now, see, I don't have that gift. If I was back there with those children, I don't know, maybe I would love it. Like saying no. But how do you know if you didn't try? I mean, what the point is, is that God has got something for all of us to do. I saw people in my church today running around with umbrellas, helping people walk into the church. You think that matters? I saw people back here getting cookies and coffee and et cetera for people as they come in, greeting people in the name of the Lord. You think that matters? I saw a guy get excited during the worship time and decided to say, I'm going to come up here and show everybody what it looks like to just kind of praise the Lord and clap his hand. Did you see that happen tonight? Do you think that matters? I saw a worship team here today, this morning, getting ready to get going. I saw a media team up there getting ready to get going. They've got the notes in. They've got everything ready. Everything's been done. People have been working hard to get ready. People have been putting chairs out. People have been visiting with people. People have been greeting people. I want you to know there's something for you to do here. And let me tell you this. When you get involved, then you get to experience the abundant life. I have never met a Christian that was not involved, who was happy with their life. Never met one. Because you're not living the life that God has for you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to stop thinking about taking and start thinking about giving. So if God has laid it on you to get involved with something, I'm going to hang around as long as I need to today because I want you to get involved because I'm telling you, when you get involved with what God calls you to do, great things happen. Real quick, as Salo makes his way up, Salo come, comes around, Salo, and get yourself ready to go. Come on back here and get everything set up. I just want to tell you something. This is our missionary. He wasn't always our missionary. I met him about four years ago. About four years ago, I met this guy, and I had been doing missions to Mexico totally about 20 years. And it started way back when I was in Henry, Tennessee. And pastoring the Henry Baptist Church and Hispanic people were immigrating to my town. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to know that the way God called me into that missions ministry is I was just standing uh, by my door at the school where I, where I was working. And two boys walked by me who couldn't speak English at all. And I want you to know I heard it so clearly. God specifically asked me, what are you going to do for these Hispanic people that are in your community who don't know Jesus and can't speak your language? And I tell you the truth, I didn't know Spanish. I didn't know the culture. I didn't know what to do. But what I did do is I said, you know what? I just can't stand it. I just can't look at people and say, you know what? It's okay if they never hear the gospel. I can't look at people and say, it's okay if I never make friends with them and help them and, and show them that God loves them. And I said, God, I don't know what to do, but God, as you give me your power and your grace, I'll try. And I want you to know it wasn't a year later, and the first man got saved, and I baptized him, and his name is Rogelio Soto. And I want you to know that 20 years later, he is still in the gospel ministry. Amen. He learned how to preach by preaching alongside of me. We had Hispanic people coming into my church, and I was standing here preaching the gospel, and we had people who couldn't speak English that had earphones in, and Roy was in the back, and as I was pacing this way preaching, he was pacing that way preaching, and people got saved, and he learned how to preach, and 20 years later, he's still doing it. And because, amen, go ahead and praise God. And so then, because of that, I got introduced to Monterrey, Mexico, and Pastor Omar Corona. And then I got introduced to Durango, Mexico. And then some 15 years later, this guy shows up from, from his town and comes and meets me. And four years later, he is in the gospel ministry. And I want you to know that all of the things that are happening now started a long time ago with God. And God calling one guy that didn't know what he was doing into the ministry. Yeah. And if God can do that for me, he can do that for you.
I want you guys right now to give a big Life Church welcome to our missionary, Saulo Zuniga. Come on, welcome him to the Life Church. Oh, man. man, I'm happy to be here. I'm so happy. I can, I can express with words how I, how I feel in this moment. But yes, the church has to be alive. I have read in the, I have, I have read in the Bible. And I tried to find a verse that said that the church has to be sit down all the time. And you know what? I couldn't find it. But what I, what I find is the essential process that makes people in the church grow is sharing the gospel. When you share the gospel, you are going to grow in your faith. And when you grow in your faith, you are going to grow as a church. Because when the sheep, the sheep has to be healthy. Because when the sheep, they, are, they, they, are, uh, they have disease, they can grow. But when they are healthy, they can grow. And I want to share you with, uh, with you some of the things that are happening there in Gomez Palacio. It is amazing that we have a church here in the United States. But people, you have a church in Gomez Palacio, Durango. It's your church. It's your church. And you are taking part in what God is doing there. I, I want to show you a video. Okay? Media team, can you help me with, with, with the video? It has an audio. Do you know what happened there? She's Angeles. You see that, people. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's just stop the video, please. And you know what happened? I have a lady in my church. Her name is Cassandra. Cassandra, I asked her for permission to share with this, share this with the church. I asked her, "Can I show with Life Church Island your testimony?" And said, "Yes, Pastor." You know what? She was getting involved in, in, she was in drugs, in alcohol. And she arrived to the church. She confessed Jesus. He was saved. And right now, you can see a video. Her sister was saved, and we baptized her. God is good. <laughs> Sometimes for me, it was difficult. When I see that, uh, when God called me uh, to be in the ministry... Sometimes I, I, I ask God, God, I said, God, it's painful. It hurts me. Believe me, when I see that a seat in my church is empty, it hurts me a lot. It hurts me. I open my heart to you. It hurts me. And I say, Lord, it hurts me. And he told me, you have to be faithful to my calling. Lord, what I'm going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. Check, I just have four, four students. And you know what? Right now, I have a generation of the youth. His, their name is Radicales. And you know what happened yesterday? I was here in Henry, Tennessee, sharing the word. And they were working in Gomez. And yesterday, two more students were saved. God is working here and God is working there. Because I was obedient. Everybody here has to be obedient to the Lord. Everybody. It doesn't matter what are our struggles. He promised that he is going to be with us forever and ever. And let me show you another section of the video. It has audio in English. Can you go forward, please, a little bit? A little bit, a little bit more. There, okay. It has audio. Hi guys, um, my name is Martin. And Mikhail is my stepson, Jorge. Um, they keep asking me uh, uh, to tell you guys how to do that. I got to the, the church, to Life Church by Luna. Uh, we got there because of, of the guys that were working for the summer.
<laughs> Radicalis. <laughs> so you can see, church, how God moves there in Gomez Palacio. His brother, Martin. You see that? Stop the video. You know what happened one day? One day, my sister, come, Carissa. My sister was walking from the streets of Gomez Palacio. She was giving some flyers. And they arrived to one home, to one house, knocked the door, and they came, Victoria, Alex. They give one flyer to one family. And you know what? Right now, all the family, it's at the church. And all of them are being saved. You are part of my ministry there in Gomez Palacio. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. But we have to be givers. You have to be givers. You know... Let me do an illustration here. You know what the Lord says? Church, the poorer you are, you have to give more. Hmm? Because God is a giver. He gave us salvation. He gave us this church. He gave us Pastor Brian. Amen? And, but sometimes, let me explain you how it is this. Sometimes, how much do you have to work to have the money that in this moment you have in your bank account or in your wallet? How much do you have to work to have the money to pay your house? You work a lot, don't you? You work a lot. I don't know how many hours you work. Maybe you work nine, ten, or eight. I don't know how many hours you work. And when you have your money, you have your money in your hand, in your fist. Yes? And what is the situation when we have the giving basket? What we are going to do? We are going to put money here? Yes? No. You are putting your life. Right? You put in your life here. Because when you're putting the money here, you aren't putting money. You put part of your life because you worked so hard to get this money. So this is one way to worship the Lord. This is one way to worship the Lord. And sometimes our fist is in this way. You know what happened? You need to open your fist. Because if you don't open your fist, God can give you more. Do you get my point? Am I clear? So you have to open. And when you open it, you are going to receive more. Because we have a God. And our God is abundant. He wants, he wants to give you more. But we have to open or this. You know what the word said? The word said. Let me, let me tell you something here. I have time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the prophet Elijah? And the widow? You know, in the first book of Kings, in chapter number 17, the prophet was sent with a widow. 
this widow, she doesn't have nothing. She was looking for some stick. It's the stick, you know, stick to prepare meal. They are going to have food. They are going to have this meal. And her son and her, they are going to die. And when the prophet arrived with her, says, would you bring me a little water in a jar and bring me, please, a loaf of bread? And she said, I don't have nothing. I just have this. I'm going to prepare this meal. I'm going to eat it, and then I'm going to die. But the prophet says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to give. Don't be afraid to give your time to the church. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if you are going to commit more with the ministries in this church. Don't be afraid to take part in multimedia team. Because someone is going to teach you how to do this. Don't be afraid, church. You are the church of the Lord. And he promised that he's going to be with you. And the doors of the hell can can do nothing versus you. But you have to be part of the church. I mean, you don't have, you don't have to be there uh, uh, in the sitting. This is your principal enemy. You are sitting and says, okay, give me. We are givers. I'm giving my life. In the ministry that I have in Gomez. And it doesn't matter. The price that I have to pay. Because someone has to be saved. And there are more people there. That has to be saved. And I'm going to give my life. Because they need Jesus. And you have to do the same here. You have to do the same here. When we are speaking about, about uh, people from the church. When we are speaking about souls. We are speaking about numbers. We're speaking about souls that they have to be saved for the Lord. Because the Lord died for them. Do you remember the, the, the first love, the, the first time when you confess Jesus? Do you remember? Do you remember that time when you say, okay, he loves me, I love him, and I want to be forgiven? Do you remember that time? What happened when this, with the first love that you felt that time? You have to fail every day. You have to feel it every day. And remember, remember his mercy and his grace. And you have to give and share his mercy and his grace. Amen? We have to move. We have to move. Because when we move, God is going to use your life. How many of you, try to be honest, don't answer me, but try to be honest with yourself. How many of you want to say today, Lord, I'm here. Use my life. What is the name of this church? Huh? Life Church. Thank you. Thank you. What is the name? Life Church. How many? How many of you today? wants to say, Lord, I am here. Use my life in your business. How many of you wants to say today, Lord, I want to be a giver. I want to be a giver, Lord. How many of you wants to go with Pastor Brian and tell him, Pastor, you are not alone. I'm here. How can I help you, Pastor? Because I love you. Because I know that you love me. We are a family. People, we are a family. I know that I don't speak English good, but we are a family, you know? Yeah. I'm a family. Those people there, they feel your love. When you are giving here, you are giving life. Amen? You are giving life. And when you are giving life, and you support the ministry that I have there, you know, you are giving new life to those people. Because I can share with them the gospel. A Sunday ago, we were there in the church, and you know what happened? Five men confessed Jesus. 
from medicine. This Wednesday, another student confessed Jesus. So from the Sunday to this Sunday, eight people confessed Jesus. God is good. God is good. But prayer is important. Church, how can we do missions? First, I'm going to tell you four points. The first one is, we can do missions, or missions are done, with the needs of those who pray. You understand? Okay. We do missions with the feet of those who go. Amen? We do missions, people, with the hands of those people that give. And we do missions, people. Hmm. With those that really are committed with the Lord. If you are committed with the Lord, you are committed with the church. Stop to think. I am the church. You know what is the situation that I was preaching three months ago there in Gomez? Some people, I don't want to be rude, but some people be, think that the church is like a restaurant. Someone has to be at the door. Welcome. <laughs> Where I'm going to sit? Sit here. Just sit on the table. Uh, what is happening today? Here, I have this brochure for you. You know, I have this. Check it here. Uh, uh, on Tuesday, we have a small group. On Wednesday, we have a pre-meeting. Okay, here is the menu. I don't want to be rude, but it happens in Mexico. I don't know if it happens here. I hope no. And then, you know, all the volunteers arrive. How can I help you? Like the waiters, what you want? are you ready to order? Oh, yes. Bring me, bring me water, bring me this salad, bring this, 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 and this. Ah, I don't like that. Um, hmm, it, it doesn't, the taste is, what is the manager? I want to speak with the manager. Who's the manager? Oh, can you bring me the ticket, please? Here you have, I don't like the service. Sometimes it happened there in Mexico. We don't have to be consumers. We have to be servers. Because he is a server. He's always trying to help us to do his will. And when we are going to do his will, okay, he is going to be with us. Got it, my point. And other thing that I want to show you is this. God clearly, God clearly gave us the message of salvation. And he gave us the order to share the gospel. There is no need for a miracle. There is no need, okay, for an extraordinary means to a person become a Christian. I mean, sometimes he will, he, he will do it, you know. But we don't need this. The message is simple. The plan of salvation does not require us to do what is impossible to do. That will be necessary, just that you said, Lord, I'm here. Use my life to reach Metropolis, to reach all the people in my community. Today, church, I want to show you the last section of the video. Can you help me, media team, please? David. Here's David. You know what happened with David? David's a student that arrived at church. He was attending the church. On one day... He confessed Jesus. 
His mother has cancer. But he said, I have never heard that there is a God that loves me. And I'm sure about his power. So I want to give him my life because I'm pretty sure that if I obey him and the baptized, he is going to heal my mother. Can you see this kind of faith that he has? He got baptized one week ago. And the day that he got baptized, it was the first time that his mother visited the church. God is moving. And when we finished the service, we were reading people. And then his mother says, Pastor, yes, how can I help you? Can you ask Pastor Ryan to pray for me? And you know what? I think that today she's going to be at the church. This is my faith. Because I think that God is moving in this family. Those that you are watching there, people. Did you see my sister, Hela, Angeles, in the wheelchair? The youth, each Sunday in the morning, they took her down the stairs to put her upstairs, sorry, to put her on upstairs. Each Sunday, each Sunday, I was praying, asking the Lord, Lord, I need a new place. Six months ago, a lawyer, he lost his, uh, his job. And they called me, Pastor, we need help with this lawyer. This lawyer lost his job. He is depressed. I went with him. I'm working with him. He doesn't confess Jesus until this moment, but I'm pretty sure that he's going to do it. And one day, one day, when he realized and noticed what we, what we are doing with Sister Hella, you know what he said? Pastor, you don't have to do this each Sunday. When I work as a lawyer during 22, 22 years uh, uh, in my work, in my job, I bought some properties. I want to give you one. I want to give you one to build a church. And those pictures, it's about the landfill, the landfill that he wants to give us. We are not going to pay nothing, but he wants to give us. Is God good? Yeah, you can see that some people go there and throw the throw trash there. Yes. But this place it is his grace. When you are doing the things in the way that he's he's asking us, he's always be he's abundant, you know? He's always going to support you. So church this church is amazing. And I want that this church grew up more. Sometimes it's difficult. Yes. Sometimes it's difficult. Yes. But when you commit with the vision, uh, with the pastor, and with what God wants to do here in this city, this church is going to grow up more. We need you, church. We need you. Pastors need you, church. We need you. Believe me, we need you. I need supporters. I need givers. I need people that work in the media team. I need people that work there in the coffee, in the coffee uh, place. I need people that work with children. We need you. If you are looking for a chance or opportunity to serve the Lord, you are in the right place.